Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your 30 second Node.js tutorial and in this video we're just going to carry on making our to-do application. Alright then, so in the last tutorial we went ahead and created this package.json file and we also installed the packages we're going to be using for this project. So now we can go ahead and use these and flesh out our application. So when we ran npm init, it asked us a few questions and one of those questions was what is going to be the entry file of your project and we said app.js so let's go ahead and create that file i'm just going to right click the parent folder and go to a new file and i'm going to call this app.js okay so this is going to be an express application so what we need to do is first of all require that module and by the way i am going to be moving a little bit more quickly in these tutorials to create this to do application because we've already covered all the material I'm going to be using so if you're unfamiliar about anything feel free just to skip back to the previous tutorials and uh, refresh yourself anyway let's store express in a variable called express set that equal to a require and then just the module name which is express okay cool so now we can use that and I'm going to set up the express app by saying var app is equal to express and fire that function okay now we want to set our template engine. Now we're going to be using EJS to make templates in this project. So let's go ahead and set that up. I'm going to say set up template engine. And then I'll use app.set. And the thing we're setting is the view engine. And we're going to set that equal to EJS. Okay, cool. So now the project knows that we're going to use EJS for our templates. Next, we want to be able to serve up static files. So we're going to use the inbuilt express middleware called express.static to do that. So I'll say static files. And again, we've covered this in previous tutorials. App.use, we're going to use some middleware. And in the previous tutorial, I did something like this. I mapped it to a certain route. And I said, when you visit assets, kind of use this middleware and map it to a particular folder to find that static file. And it would have looked something like this, express.static. And then the folder name in this case it's just going to be the public folder right there so i'll do dot forward slash public and then whenever we visit this assets file or this assets route rather then it's going to map it to this and look for a static file in there now what i'm going to do is take away that route i'm not going to make it route specific and then this is going to be used on every route that we put into the url bar or request in a file so if we give a path to a static file like this for example let me just come down onto the next line and it's going to be localhost 3000 forward slash styles.css for example then it's going to run this middleware and it's going to look in the public folder for this styles.css now it's not going to find it because the styles is in the assets folder within that so we'd have to do something like this assets forward slash styles.css okay so if it finds that static file, it's going to return it to us. If it doesn't, then it doesn't return anything to us. Okay, cool. So now we've set up our static files. The next thing I want to do is listen to a port. So I'll just write a little comment saying listen to port. And to do that, we just need to say app.listen. And the port number we're going to listen to is 3000. And then what I'm going to do is just log a little message to the console down here. So console.log just to say what port we're listening to to remind us down here. So I'll say, you are listening to port 3000. Okay, cool. So now we've kind of fleshed out our app.js file and we've got our express app running and we're listening to a port. Now, I'm not going to write all of the code for this to-do list in this one file. And this is typically the way when you start making applications. You're going to want to split your code up into logical modules or files, if you like, to keep things nice and neat and in one place. If you do everything in one file, it's going to get out of hand really quickly. Now, I'm just going to use a simple MVC structure to split up our code in this, which basically just means I'm going to split it into models, views, and controllers. Okay, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with MVC architecture, this is just a really quick overview. It stands for Model View Controller. And the model is just our data. So in our case, it's going to be our to-dos, the items on our list, like go grab some groceries, make the bed that kind of thing that's going to be our data the list items on the to-do list um, on another website it could be the users yeah or it could be the fields on a contact form it's just the data 
Now the view is what we send to the user. In our case, it's gonna be an EJS template file and it's gonna have some data maybe embedded into it that the user can see. So we might have a view for the to-do list or we might have a view for an account page if we're working with users as the model. And then the C in MVC stands for controller. And this is the kind of part that bridges the two together, the model and the view. It controls certain sections of the application. For example, it could control the to-do section and we'd have a to-do controller. So that's gonna grab the data from the model, the to-dos, decide how to give that to the view and then pass it along to it so we can display it to the user, okay? So any kind of data manipulation we can do here in the controller. Okay then, so if we're gonna use MVC architecture for this project, then what we need to do is create a controller for our to-do list, and that's gonna control that section of the application, which incidentally is gonna be the only section. So what I'm gonna do is create a folder for the controllers. I'm gonna right click over here, go to new folder, controllers. And although there's only gonna be one controller in this app, in future projects, if you're making a larger scale apps, you might have three, four, five, six, or however many controllers. So you wanna keep them in one place or at least kind of structure them in some way that you understand. So that's why I've uh, created this folder for the controllers. So I'll right click, go to new file, and I'm gonna call this to do controller.js. So this is where the JavaScript is gonna go that is gonna control the behavior of our to-do list and kind of mani uh, manipulate the data, handle the routes, that kind of thing. Okay, so the first thing I want to do in here is say module.exports because at the end of the day, this is just a module. It's a JavaScript file, which in Node.js, remember, can be called modules, which we can import into our app.js file once we've done it. So I'm gonna export something in this file. And the thing I'm gonna export is gonna be a function. And I'll explain this in more detail in a minute, but it's gonna be a function that takes this parameter, app, and inside this function, we can do some stuff. So in here, we're gonna set up all of our request handlers. Now I've passed in, let's just get rid of that hash. I've passed in this variable right here, this app variable, and that is gonna be this thing right here. So we're gonna pass that in to this controller, okay? So first of all, let's require this controller in here. We'll say var to do controller is equal to require. And then what we need to do is specify the path to this controller, which is gonna be dot forward slash controllers forward slash to do controller. Okay, so now we've required that and we're getting the whatever's on the module that exports stored in here. And that is just a function. Right, so now what I'm gonna do down here is create a little comment saying fire controllers and I'm gonna fire this function that's returned to us. Okay, so remember in module.exports here, we're just returning this function. So that function is being stored in here and now I'm gonna fire that function. But remember, it takes this parameter right here, this app parameter. So what we're gonna pass through is this thing right here. So I'm gonna pass that through, and by passing that through, it is available to us in this function, and we can now set up our routes like app.get, for example. Okay, so that's why I've done all that. So now we've successfully created this controller where we're gonna have all of our um, JavaScript code, which is gonna control the to-do list section of the application. So things like the routes or passing data to the view, yeah? Okay, so let's make these routes then. Let's. Uh, kind of make these handlers for the different requests we're gonna get. And the first request we might get is just a get request for the URL itself. And this is gonna be for forward slash to do. Okay, and then we're gonna fire a function with a request object and a response object. And then inside this function, we're gonna build this out later on, but we'll probably just render a view. Now, as well as a get request, we're gonna need a handler for a post request for when an, um, a user adds a new item to the list. So we'll probably have a little form field where they can add something to the list and then press a button, which is gonna fire a post request. We need to handle that as well. So let's copy this dude and then paste it underneath. Change get to post. And then we're gonna handle this later on as well. And then finally, we're also gonna let the user delete 
items off the list or strike them out if they've completed them. And for that, we need to handle a delete request. So we'll say app.delete. And this is just another HTTP verb which we can handle, okay, in a different way. And again, I'm just gonna put this to forward slash to do and give it a function with the request object and the response object, which is gonna fire when we get a delete request. So we're gonna see how all this works later on in the tutorial. For now, we're just gonna kind of set them up ready for us. So in this tutorial, what we've done is we've created our app.js file, which is the entry point for our application. So this is gonna fire when the application first starts. We've set up our app using Express. Uh, we've set out view engine. We've set up the static files using the built-in middleware into Express called express.static. We've listened to a port and logged this message to the console. Then we've created a controller for our to-do list so we can handle the routes and the rendering of views and the passing of data to views in this controller for the to-do list. So we're separating our code, keeping it nice and modular so it doesn't get too out of hand. And then what we're doing is we're requiring that controller or that module in this app.js file, storing it in this variable then we're firing the function that is returned to us in this require statement and stored here. We're firing it down here and passing through the app as a parameter so it can take that there so we can use app.get, app.post and create these different handlers. Okay, so in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is create a view for when someone visits forward slash to do and then we're going to start fleshing it out with some data as well. So any questions so far, feel free to leave those down below. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to share, subscribe, like, and I'm going to see you in the very next video.